Hello my friends. What I have here is an arrow quiver made out of split ash and uh, spruce root. It's stained with uh, natural walnut stain and it will hold roughly two dozen target arrows or a dozen pointing arrows. Uh, the project's a pretty quick and easy project. It can be constructed in one afternoon. It's very rewarding and I hope my instructions make it simple. These are the bases to the quiver and what I'm starting with is half inch strips. I have five of these. They're uh, 53 inches long. <clears throat> now that's about six inches oversized. And then I have one strip that's one inch wide. And the reason for this is it's going to be split on one side down the center. So that'll give me two half inch strips. The other side will be tapered down to just a half inch wide. And the reason I'm doing that, that will give me an odd number of uprights and that will allow a continuous weave. So first thing we need to do is locate our center, leave a three inch base, split this side down the center to the baseline and the other side of the baseline it'll be tapered down to a half inch width. When I chose these uprights these are split ash. When I chose these uprights I chose the thicker ones. I want these to be stiffer. You can see the <clears throat> center is here. I started to taper near the center and brought it out to the end. So there's one. Then this one I'm going to cut down the center and I'll use my scissors or shears if these don't work well and this will make two slats now they need to be soaked <clears throat> these these slats have been soaking for an hour and what I'm going to do, I have all the ends gathered together and this one was marked. You can see the mark there. And what I'll do is mark all of these now. Okay, now we want to start laying these out and we want to put the smooth side down on each one of these next we take spruce root I'm holding the the slats down, taking the spruce root and starting in the split. Now if you don't have a wide uh, slat that's not a problem. You just use a half length and start with the one end tucked under but this makes it much easier. Now we're taking the spruce root and we're going to start a standard weave and I want to have this tucked as far as I can
I'm starting with the uh, thinner end of the spruce root because this is going to be the tighter section. After the second time around, all these slats will, <clears throat> will be held in its proper position. We're going to keep tightening this up. You can see now it's starting to hold its position. This, the uh, slats are staying together. We continue this weave until we get the bottom of the basket to the diameter at which we're trying to achieve and what I want is three inches. Okay, now to add we're going to tuck this in. And then continue the weave. That looks to be three inches. These are a four inch tile. So now what we do is we tuck this end also. Okay, we put the tag ends on the inside of the quiver. Okay, from this point we need to get a bend. I'm taking this very gentle because these were dry and they were soaked only an hour. So we'll get a bend and hopefully we'll get a memory out of this. Memory out of the bend. Now we're ready for the weavers. Now I've taken a weaver and I tapered the beginning edge and I'm going to start weaving and I'm using keeping the smooth side out and I, I have this uh, bundle tied with a hair tie to hold it together once I get it started once I get this started and part way up then I'll remove the tie because these weavers will hold the basket in its proper shape and the basket or quiver the quiver is going to be slightly tapered for its entire length so it'll be wider at the mouth than it is at the bottom and we do that so that we don't uh, tear up the feathers of the arrows in the quiver the space for the arrows needs to be wider. We've made one revolution and you can see here because we 
created an odd number that when it comes around it's doing the proper weave. You can control the diameter of this by tugging on these weavers as you're going. So we pretty much want this to be almost vertical but it's going to be 20 inches tall so over the entire length we have to allow it to gradually open. Okay, now we need to add. So we take another weaver and we follow this one and we need to go back and tuck it under one back in here. And again, I'm feeling for the smooth side out. This one will hide the loose end right there. Cover this. And now we continue our weave. To make it easier, I'm going to remove my tie at the other end. Okay, the weaving's getting easier now. And I'm tugging on this weaver to control its diameter of the quiver tube. And as I go around, I keep pushing the weavers tight like that. And if you look, that diameter, <coughs> so I increased <coughs> the diameter almost two inches. As I work my way around, I keep pulling these down make the gaps tight. Okay, I'm about 17 inches. I need to start thinking about putting the handle loop into this because I want to weave it in and make it lock into the top rim. The traditional native arrow is about 22 inches long and more modern arrows are about 30 to 32 inches long so 20 inches 20 inches is uh, almost too long well, actually, it's about right. Most native feathers were extended into the quiver. More modern, you'd need about 20 inches. That'll leave the top 10 inches of the arrows exposed. As this continues to dry, there's some shrinkage and that's the gaps that I'm pulling out. We're at 20 inches. Spruce root is very pliable. So I'm going to bend this into a handle. little at a time. A little from both sides.
here is the spruce root and I cut it on my shave horse and you can see the notch that I carved in. This notch hooks on to the inner rim and I did that on both sides. This is pliable enough that it can bend into a loop and it's going to be woven into the quiver. The quiver is at 20 inches long so this strip has to terminate the top so what I'm going to do is trim this into a long wedge then finish the weave. Here I'm soaking the upper portion of the quiver. These uprights are going to have to be able to be folded back upon itself. So it needs good soaking. Here is a piece of spruce root. It was split in half. This is going to make the outer perimeter. But I need to make this uh, tapered and tapered the other side so that they will blend in together when it goes around. Okay, all these ends they need to be cut approximately two inches. I'm going to cut them on a slight angle. This will help me insert into the weaves. like that. Okay, these have been wet. Okay, now it also needs tucked, but the characteristic of this ash, I can split that off. Now this is flexible. Maybe that should be done with them all. That give you trouble. This is the inner band and I need to make a transition between both ends. Like that. I'm going to slide this underneath that inner band and that notch right here is going to catch on that inner band. I also want this to slide underneath one of the weaves. This inner band is what is locking this loop on. Now we need the outer band and around here the outer band is going to go on and then that will be lashed on with fine spruce root. Need to trim this make it uniform thickness 
this was already split. One end has to be feathered to match the other side. Like that. And this side will get feathered. I need to cut off right here. And this has to match. the other side. So when it comes around, it makes a neat, this piece here has been cut to length. We bend it around and it will splice right in. Now we secure it so we could lash it. Here I have spring clamps on the outer root. And this is going to hold it while I start lashing. Spruce root. I'm pushing this through a portion of the inner band. Okay, I went all the way around one time. Now I'm going to go around a second time but in the opposite direction. And what this is going to do is put an X on the top of the band. All the lashing is finished. And what I did here is I took a spoon, you could use a stick, and I want this loop to be bent away from the opening. So I'm going to leave this dry like this. Everything was soaking wet. So it's all pliable, and as it dries, it'll get stiffer. Okay, now we're going to stain this, and we're using the walnut stain that we just made. And I have about a cup and a half of stain. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into here. And um, when you're storing your arrows or using the quiver, if you're using a broadhead on the arrows, what I will do is place a thick piece of leather at the bottom, and that will protect the tips of the arrows.
the bottom of the quiver is smaller than the upper portion. It's made out of split ash wood. It has a natural black walnut stain. It is uh, made with split ash and uh, split spruce root. And you can see here the top section has a loop for a toggle or for a shoulder sling. I use different diameter spruce, spruce root for terminating the top of this. And I use spruce root at the bottom to hold the uh, basic uh, vertical staves together, bottom of the basket together. The quiver can hold a couple dozen target arrows, maybe a dozen hunting arrows. Uh, to protect the bottom, if you're using hunting arrows, I would insert a thick uh, disc of leather. Hope this video was enjoyable and helpful to you. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.